How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine, and this is part 25, making the eccentric straps. I was hoping to make all of them in one go, but unfortunately I'm still waiting for the second set to arrive from Stuart Models. Just in case you're wondering what am I doing at the moment, I'm checking the alignment of the eccentric sheaves with the expansion link, and thankfully that's looking okay. Here are the castings that I currently have. One pair of gunmetal castings to make one eccentric strap, and two eccentric rods. In this episode, I'm going to show how I make a finished eccentric strap. The first part of the job involves cleaning up the castings lightly on my belt sander, and then I fit the two halves in the milling machine vise, making sure that the top parts are as level as possible. And the reason for doing this is that I need to take a very light cut across the mating faces of the eccentric strap, so that when they're put together, everything aligns and is very level. If I didn't do this, and just cleaned up the mating faces on the belt sander, they would look okay. But, when I put them together, they may not be perfectly flat. When working gun metal, it's most important to use very sharp tools. This end mill has done quite a lot of work. If you've been watching this series, it's done quite a lot of milling of cast iron. So it's not quite as sharp as it used to be. It's cutting okay, but this will be possibly its last excursion into the cutting world. As you can see by this part of the video, I'm only machining a very small part of the metal away. After the milling job is complete, I touch the straps on the 1 inch belt sander extremely lightly, no pressure at all, just enough to polish the surfaces. As the mating surfaces are perfectly flat and fit together very well, I don't want to alter this by putting too much pressure on the belt sander. The flat surfaces of the mating parts of the eccentric strap allow me to accurately position the strap the other way up in the machine vise. And now I'm going to machine some other areas of the eccentric strap that need to be flat. The now flat part of the eccentric strap castings are sat on two pieces of mahogany. And before I get any comments from expert engineers saying, why are you not using proper parallels? I don't have any, I've never had any. If I need parallels, and parallels I think are strips of metal that are accurately machined parallel I assume, I would generally use pieces of square tool steel, very cheap, and I think you'll find that that's quite parallel. But for the moment I'm using two pieces of mahogany. When a micrometer that, you know, it's surprisingly parallel. It will do for this job anyway. In the unlikely event of a job coming in where I need to make scientific equipment and parts for satellites, I will buy a set of parallels. But up until that time, I'm quite happy just living in my parallel universe. Making eccentric straps is a combination of engineering and general metal bashing. I've just machined the two side areas of the strap where the bolts will be fitted, and now I'm machining the top part of the eccentric strap perfectly parallel to the mating surfaces. And this is where the eccentric rod will fit. Over now to some handwork with a needle file. Although I freely admit I do use the one inch belt sander for removing the bulk of the material. And then it's back to a bit more filing, followed by heavy grade sandpaper down to lighter grade sandpaper, and occasionally back to the file if I've missed a bit. Health and safety warning on this one, be careful with these needle files, the sharp points can stick in you quite easily. I've stuck needle files into parts of my hand quite frequently, but I try not to these days, as I've got older I've definitely got wiser, and it's not as much fun as it used to be. Eventually, after much effort, the part will start to look like this. This is not done by hand though, it's done on a polishing spindle. There are a couple of points I'd like to make. First of all, a health and safety announcement. Polishing spindles can be extremely dangerous. If all you have is a polishing mop on the end of a grinder, it's a good idea to fit a guard, because if the polishing mop grabs the part, it will hit the guard, and with a bit of luck will not hit you. And I am speaking from experience on this one. I used to have a polishing spindle that was just a mop on the end of a grinder. And one day I was polishing a small piece of copper pipe, and the wheel grabbed it and threw it in my face. The part was travelling so fast, it hit me on the cheek, and you know, it really hurt. It was very painful indeed. Don't get carried away polishing and cleaning at this stage. You do not want to remove hardly any material from the outside edge because once you turn the inside part, you will notice that it's not quite as symmetrical as it used to be, and I'll cover that very shortly. So once again, using some Frylux paint, I'm now going to solder the two halves together, just like I did with the mounting bracket. 
There are many different ways of doing this. Some people solder the halves together as well as drilling and tapping the parts to bolt them together. I don't do this for a couple of reasons. Yes, the part would be stronger, but I'm going to be removing a considerable amount of metal from each side to get them down to the finished size, which is 3 eighths of an inch. And if I accidentally took more metal off one side than the other, then the bolt hole would be no longer in the center. So I don't do that. Drilling the bolt holes is the last thing that I do before I separate the parts. I would drill the holes, separate the parts, and then thread the lower part of the eccentric strap. But first of all, I need to solder the parts together, and here comes the heat. Don't get carried away, this is not silver soldering, so it doesn't need to be that hot. It needs to be just hot enough to melt the solder, not destroy it completely. And once the Fryer Lux paint solder starts to melt, I verify that it's hot enough by just touching some multi-core solder on the joint. I'll demonstrate this. I'm using some standard electrical solder which has the flux down the centre. And as you can see, it's just sitting as a blob on top of the part. So the metal is not hot enough yet for the solder to flow. But after a while, things change. The flux starts to do its job and the solder flows, and then you know you've got a good joint. A strong soldered joint is essential because the last thing you want is for the two parts to separate while you're machining the hole in the middle. I didn't quench this part. For maximum strength, I just let it cool naturally in the air. And it was a good time to go up to Blackgate's Engineering and buy the bits and pieces that I showed in the last video. So now we can get down to the proper business. I need to machine this hole in the centre to be a perfect fit on the eccentric sheave. And here you can also see there's quite a bit of metal to be removed from the two outside edges. I showed this modification in a previous video. I remachined the end of the chuck key to fit in my battery powered drill. This allows me to change the jaws on the four jaw chuck quickly. I used to really hate changing the jaws because it took such a long time, but now with my DeWalt drill, the jaws just fly in and out and it's far better. And once all the jaws are in the correct position, I fit the component, adjust the jaws manually, and then it's machining time. It is, however, very important to make sure that you're getting the cutter in the correct position, because if you do this wrong, you may still get the hole to be the right size for the eccentric sheave, but the eccentric will look a little bit strange because it will be off-centre. So it's worth taking your time with this. I'd like to say at this stage I'm not doing this for real at the moment, I'm doing it for the video, the part isn't positioned properly in the chuck, I'm just showing you the principle. With the boring bar very close to where it's going to be cutting, it allows me to move the part and get it fairly well centralised. It can take some time to get it right, and you must get it right, because if you lose patience and start cutting immediately, when you look at the end product, you'll think, oh yeah, I see what he means, it's all off-centre and wonky. Then you'll have to remove quite a lot of metal from the outside edge of the eccentric, and it will become weak. Also, it's impossible to bore this part in this position. It needs moving out a little bit. Like this, in fact. I've moved it to the end of the jaws, and I did this by putting a piece of wood behind it and gently tapping it. I'll show you this in a minute. In this part of the clip, I'm showing how I use the boring bar to machine some metal from the front face of the eccentric strap. The sequence is unimportant really. You can bore the centre hole and then you can use the boring bar like this or continue boring the centre hole to the correct dimension. I would like to mention once again that when machining gun metal the tool needs to be very very sharp. This boring bar wasn't very very sharp but it is now. And a good tip is once you've gone through with the boring bar reverse the direction of the traverse with this lever and then once you engage the auto traverse, don't touch the setting at all. Make sure the setting is exactly the same as it went in. And as the boring bar comes back through the hole, removing a very tiny amount of material, you get a superb finish. But do be aware, if you don't get a very good finish on the way in, and the part is the size you need it to be, as the boring bar comes back through the work, it will still be cutting and removing a small amount of metal, and the part will then be oversized. Oversized with a good finish, but oversized nevertheless. During this entire machining operation, I haven't used any measuring equipment. I've just been using the eccentric sheave as a plug gauge, and eventually it fits perfectly. It's not slack and it's not tight. 
The next part of the job is to get the eccentric strap to the correct thickness to fit the eccentric sheath perfectly. I'm fitting the eccentric strap with the unmachined area facing outwards and I'm using the small piece of hardwood to set the distance that I need the eccentric strap casting to be from the back of the chuck. Really I should have filmed this at first when I set the casting in the chuck but I was incompetent and forgot to press record and please read that as incompetent not incontinent as the words incompetent and incontinent are not related in any way. Before completing the job I resharpened the boring bar because it was a little bit blunt I noticed the burrs on the other side and if you look at this clip you will also see that the casting is not running concentrically to the hole down the centre and there wasn't any point in spending time setting up the casting so that the hole in the centre ran true because the machining of the centre hole is complete. A quick check with the micrometer confirms that this is now 3 8 of an inch wide and it's now time to drill the holes for the bolts. These need to be precisely in the centre of this part of the eccentric strap and the first thing I'm going to do is put some marks in the approximate position with a felt tip pen followed by using my needle file scriber to mark the accurate position where the holes need to be. And then it's over to the drilling machine. First of all I drill a hole with the centre drill and then I carefully drill a hole all the way through using a 1 8 drill which is tapping size for 4BA. In this part of the eccentric strap I'm drilling an oil hole and I started off with the centre drill as usual and this is a number 48 drill which is tapping size for 5BA. And this will take a nice little oil cup. An oil cup like this in fact. I screwed it into the hole part way in just to show you how it looks. But then I unscrewed it and put it in a safe place so I can carry on with the job. What I'm doing in this clip is using a centre punch to make a couple of marks on the eccentric so that when it's separated I know which way it needs to go back together. And this was the first side of the eccentric strap to be machined. And you will notice that I didn't machine it completely to the edge. Was this intentional? No. But when it's been finally cleaned up on the wet or dry sandpaper on the surface plate, you won't notice it anyway. Once I reheated the eccentric strap, it fell back into its two parts. I very lightly cleaned up the soldered faces, and now I'm tapping the lower eccentric strap only. In this clip, I'm very carefully using a 4BA tap to do this and I drilled a 964th hole in the top part of the strap. So now I can bolt the two halves together. Are they going to fit? Yes they certainly are. A very good fit, I'm quite pleased with this. It's not a tight fit, it's a very snug fit, just as it should be. I'm temporarily refitting the oil cup to see what it looks like in the last part of the video. Yes, and that's near enough for rock and roll. And with considerable excitement, or as excited as I ever get, I await with anticipation the delivery of the second eccentric strap from Stuart Models. Which reminds me, I do need to phone Stuart Models today because I need to also order some cylinder drain cocks for this engine. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.